Hey, hi everyone. So in this video, I'll be going through the Telos, Telos Proxmox cluster uh, repository that I've recently made in a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, this is for automating the creation of a Telos cluster in a Proxmox instance. So as you can see, I'm running a cluster already, and you can see this is my this is this VM that I'm running actually, which is named Work. And then I have a couple other VMs for uh, that are running Talos, right? So this is on 1.5.1, and I found out today that we have a new release. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all show you that actually I'm using what I'm using, like how the cluster is behaving and where it is making the uh, like how it is configured, and then I'll uh, destroy the cluster and create it with a new version. So I know I don't need to destroy all the VMs, I can just uh, update them with Dallas CTL, but this is just to demonstrate that you know uh, you can start a fresh uh, brand new instance uh, of Dallas cluster using this. So what I will be doing is I have already copied my uh, vars that are needed to configure this. You can go through this documentation and find out um, what you need to edit. So if you see, the, these are all the variables in the TFR. And what you can do is basically you can just uh, copy this example file, and then from here you can just modify uh, what all variables you are. Right? So for example, my system type is Intel. Uh, if you are on a on an AMD system, you need to put AMD over here. Um, similarly, your uh, endpoint. So you just need to update the IP address and username password. So I would suggest not to use root and uh, your your root user. Uh, try to use uh, another privileged user that has access to create uh, VMs and templates. But uh, yeah, you can you can obviously use root. I'm I'm going to be using my root user in this particular scenario because I didn't want to. Uh, I don't like to configure multiple users just for myself uh, since I'm the only user in this environment. Uh, but if you are running this where multiple pe people are using this, consider creating a separate user for this. Right, and then you can have how many master nodes and how many worker nodes you want, and then configuration for each of them. Right, and this is the configuration for HA proxy. So this will be our. Uh, Kubernetes load balancer. So what I mean by that is, so if I do k get nodes uh, v equals to. So if you don't know v, my equals to is for like uh, for logging purposes. So the larger the number you give for this lab, it will uh, log out more details, right? So if you give v12, you can see all this log in JSON, and then there is this. Uh, this is our output. You can see we are using uh, one master node one control plane and we have two work on nodes and if you look at the network request let's see if I can find that okay so if you look at the network request it is actually going to this particular endpoint right so if I arc this IP address this is my Raspberry Pi which is acting as a load balancer for my Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes uh, what do you call it? my Kubernetes nodes, right? So uh, you don't really need this for when you are having like one control plane, like I am having right now. Uh, but let's say if in future you want to add more nodes, then it is very useful to have a load balancer like this because let's say one control plane is down for whatever reason then uh, your cluster will keep up, keep on working right so that is that um, yeah so let me also show you the version so if we do OI you will see that I am on 1.5.1 for my cluster and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this cluster and then we are gonna we are gonna go from there so what we are gonna do is uh, so I should have used Terraform Destroyer for this but anyways let's just shut this down uh, 
Right, so one more uh, interesting thing about this project is that I'm using system extensions uh, that Talos provides, uh, which lets me do things like shut down from the UI. So uh, if you use Talos in a Proxmox environment, it won't really work unless you have system extensions uh, baked into it. And uh, my project sort of automates that process. So you don't have to worry about um, QEMU guest agent and you don't have to worry about uh, microcode for your AMD or Intel system. So then I'll delete this template because we are going to be regenerating this. So you don't need to uh, do this each time you uh, use this project uh, and the project will actually delete this template for you. Uh, but I'm just doing this uh, so that I represent someone who is doing this for the first time. Right, so I don't have any templates that I can reuse and I'm going to get rid of these VMs as well. Just want to start this. So now we have uh, an environment where we don't have any Talos related things. Um, so what are we gonna do? We are gonna first of all clone this project. And this is my GitHub directory. I'm gonna do the clone. So now I have uh, you. I'm I'm not gonna show my TFRs because of security concerns. Uh, but basically, this uh, this example file will look very similar, right? So in my TFRs, we just have uh, one master node and two worker nodes, each with six gigs of memory for worker nodes and master. I think I'm going two gigs. Um, you can use whatever configuration you see fit for your cluster, but uh, that's what I'm going to use, right? Uh, and for this HA proxy configuration, you can read more uh, on how to set up your Raspberry Pi or whatever VM you want to set this on uh, over here. So this guide goes through uh, what are all the commands that you need to run on a load balancer VM or your Raspberry Pi, with whichever you see fit. Um, so this will just uh, set up HA proxy. Uh, this is for Debian based systems. As you can see, I'm using, uh, I think I'm using Ubuntu on my, uh, yeah, I'm using Ubuntu on my Raspberry Pi. So this, these steps might differ based on your distribution of choice, but basically you want to run uh, HA proxy for a privileged user which does not have access to anything apart from uh, being able to restart uh, HA proxy like this. 
okay and uh, yeah so once you have that you can just run terraform apply and this will sort of this will just go through all the steps that are present in main.tf over here and then create a cluster so i'm going to do that so terraform connect So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read through these uh, th through this code and sort of explain what's going on. Uh, so first of all, you can see we have a couple of local variables. Um, sort of keeping uh, I have a couple of shell scripts that are providing these local variables. As you can see, we are using data dot external versions, and versions is running this shell script, which will basically fetch uh, the latest version for all these. Um, Dallas images, right, and then put them in a variable like this so that we can use them later on for uh, whatever purposes, right? So, for example, Imager is a Docker image using which you can create a Dallas image, and you can see we have uh, created a Docker container which is creating our image, and uh, yeah, so you can see the Imager uses this image and creates um, a docker file like a file which you, which we'll be using later on to actually create a template right and looks like it's already done but let's go through the code um, let's see so we have so this is a docker container for the same thing you can see i'm mounting dev for because this is required for the image to actually create the create the QCOW2 image. Uh, you can read more about this uh, imager on the Talos uh, data organization page. They have some um, packages. So if I go over here and if I go over here, yeah, so over here you can find more about this uh, Docker image from this page. Right, and they have documentation on how to run this and stuff on other uh, pages as well. So from that you can understand uh, why we need this dev volume and why this needs to be a privileged container. But you can read more from there. And then we are setting up this Docker container. So uh, let's look at the scripts right. So there are a couple of utility scripts basically this one is just trying to spin up that docker container if uh, it fails after five um, like it tries like a lot of times and then if it still isn't able to spin up the docker container then it fails right um, what else let's see so that's what docker.ss does and then Right, so now once the, so I think this is the folder where, yeah, so if you see this is the folder where we are outputting the um, final raw image, this file gets copied over to your, um, this file gets copied over to your Terraform VM, like the uh, VM that you have specified in your Terraform TFRs file right it will uh, copy to the root directory like this in this folder right and then rename it to talos.raw.exe right once it's there then it will uh, run this shell script to create a template out of it and then uh, the modules for master and worker domain are basically just uh, creating vms using that template and you can see we are passing all the memory cpus and whatever settings we got from the um, from the tfrs over to this module there are a couple uh, hard coded variables that you can change um, right so we have this cpu version so this is what talos recommends 
and then uh, you can change this if you want if you can change the BIOS it, I've tried it with uh, CBIOS as well seems to work um, but yeah these are these are what uh, I use for uh, the best performance basically and what else so this will create our worker and master uh, virtual machines and you can read the code over here this is the proxmox VMQEMU resource that is being created inside the module and it's just uh, so once this module is created we also actually try to figure out the IP address using this shell script and this uh, this does nothing but uh, arps your network to find the IP address since we only know the MAC address of the virtual machine in this particular context we do not have the IP address so the shell script basically arps the network the lo local network and then figures out what is the IP address for the given MAC address of your uh, VM right? once this is done we update the HA proxy configuration on your uh, Raspberry Pi so that it points to the uh, right nodes in the cluster so for example your um, cube config will point will have a couple endpoints for um, like the load balancer right so the load balancer uh, also needs to balance the load between the right nodes right so basically this will update the HA, uh, HA proxy config such that it uh, let's say if there is a API call going to uh, control uh, plane then it will pick up like if you have multiple control planes then it will choose one of them that, that's what load balancing is basically right and then <coughs> what else yeah so this this whole thing is just for updating the HA proxy thing and then we have this shell script that we provision basically this will uh, do the setup so this is also being provi being provisioned from a template file so if you look at templates over here, we have a Talos template and basically we replace this uh, nodes like wherever we have node host and whatever we, we just basically replace them with a loop and uh, how many ever uh, nodes you have created for all of them it will apply the Talos CTL configuration automatically so as you can see we have uh, successfully created the cluster and so I actually went on a tangent back there but uh, I'm just gonna cut that from the video. Basically you can still use your Talos configuration to uh, as, a, as a cube config and somehow uh, make a CLI request but uh, I don't wanna go get into that you can read the docs for that and uh, basically now we have our uh, Talos cluster with 1.5.2 uh, image right so if you see in our Proxmox instance we have these three VMs and we also have this template that we are using for provisioning these VMs um, yeah so if you like this uh, project please consider giving it a star and I'll see you next time